Hi friends, I don't know if you know this, but I don't like rage bait content. Uh, a lot of times when videos come up that kind of feel confrontational, well, I end up putting them on the shelf. But the discussions around this subject haven't gone anywhere, so let's try and tackle the subject of AI slop. People love to say that AI slop is everywhere. Some folks wrinkle their nose at it, call it trash, dismiss it, and scroll past without a second thought. But what exactly makes AI sloppy? Many people insist that anything AI touches automatically becomes slop. It's like that one kid in school who claims that any cafeteria food is radioactive sludge even the really good pizza days. First things first, you have probably heard that AI is slop because it's built on stolen data. And yes, that is true in many unfortunate scenarios where every major tech provider out there participates in this, even when they pretend not to. But let's not ignore all of the fantastic community-driven AI projects that are built on volunteer contributions. This alone shows that AI can exist in a place that doesn't need stolen data. It's just that big tech doesn't want to engage with that particular option. Then you've got the folks who say that AI is slop because of the environmental impacts, and again, totally valid criticism, but it is starting to lose its punch with the rise of local models. Nowadays, your old dusty laptop can spit out an image or two without burning down the Amazon rainforest. Much like those recycling myths that blame you and me for garbage patches in the ocean while conveniently ignoring corporations and their own negligent practices, AI's environmental issues mostly come Come from big businesses utilizing the services, not your weekend hobbyist messing with stable diffusion. This isn't me trying to be dismissive of the problem. I'm full on telling you right now, it's an issue. The anger is just directed at the wrong group of people. Now, despite all the valid concerns, we can't deny that there are some genuine sloppy hallmarks in AI, stuff even the fans have to admit. And no, I don't just mean the classic 12-fingered AI-generated horror shows, though let's be honest, that is a classic. AI slop also includes lazy outputs, like those times ChatGPT tells you to just insert code here. Like, that is what I pay you for, my dude. Please get with the program. Okay, getting back on track, hallucinations also count, because Claude going rogue and confidently informing you that a goblin's natural state is that of a full tux and top hat is about as sloppy as it gets. Then there's low effort human creations using artificial intelligence, like that Willy Wonka event, or the painfully bad character cards that float around, complete with the kind of quality that makes my first attempt at fan fiction look like Shakespeare. It doesn't stop there though. Irrelevant, misleading, or flat out unhelpful responses, especially refusals, those also count as AI slop. Pretty much anything that wastes your precious time or tries to sneakily replace someone's job falls squarely into the slop bucket. Before you toss out the baby with the AI generated bathwater, let's give this some historical context. Every media type from radio to television, movies to video games, has to crawl through several stages before establishing a quality threshold. That term, quality threshold, we're all familiar with the concept. It is essentially your meter stick for what makes something good or bad. For every medium, you're going to have different things that raise or lower the ability for a piece of work to reach that bar and what you consider quality. That sort of media development can take generations and usually involves plenty of false starts. First comes discovery and exploration, and then comes media maturation, where the community around that medium begins to ascribe the quality threshold. Finally, after a lot of trial and error, and maybe some cringeworthy experimentation, we establish a more clear, mostly agreed upon standards as to what makes something good or bad. We've been doing this song and dance forever. Think about the start of streaming for a second. It was a time when you could go ahead and stream a video game at a whopping 480p resolution, and that was totally acceptable. Viewers would squint at blurry pixels for an hour or two, munching on snacks without complaint. But now, if the stream isn't in crisp HD with a good mic, face cam, active chat, and commentary, it'll be a struggle. I understand that there will always be outliers that are going to be the exception to the rule with these things, but the standards have risen dramatically, turning casual gamers into full-blown entertainment professionals over the years. Another big standout is VR. A virtual reality had a pretty rocky start, with the Virtual Boy being the standout that only lasted a year and left a lot of people skeptical for decades. 
It feels like the VR industry spent about 30 years quietly stockpiling gasoline and then boom, out of nowhere, VR was back, roaring to life and driven by higher standards than ever before. Now, it's not just enough to strap a big sweaty brick onto your forehead. Users demand increased refresh rates, wider fields of view, adjustments for comfort. Basically, VR has finally realized that it needs to not actively torture the users to be successful. All right, last up on this list is probably the best known example, CGI and 3D modeling. When CGI hit the animation scene, everyone was paying attention. There was a lot of anxiety about quality drops and fears that we'd possibly lose beautifully hand-drawn artistry to soulless digital robots. And look, those fears weren't totally unfounded either at the time. If you've ever watched certain early 2000s anime like Gundam Seed, you've probably cringed at some moments of questionable CGI. CGI, which is not meant as shade. Studio Sunrise has genuinely given us some classics like Cowboy Bebop that mean the world to me. To viewers at the time, myself included, this just didn't meet the quality I had come to expect from the studio, even though it was still enjoyable. Despite these missteps, the messy phase was actually necessary for us to help figure out exactly where the bar for good CGI should be. Nowadays, the standards for quality in 3D animation, it's crystal clear. You can't just roll out something that looks like Joshua in the Promised Land unless you are deliberately taking the piss. Standards evolve, but sometimes we forget that they're context-dependent. Take the recent Berserk adaptation. Fans were understandably not thrilled with the animation direction and quality, but if you had dropped that same animation style back into the 80s where Golgo 13's helicopter scene was greenlit, fans would have been far more receptive. It is all about context and the quality standard for the time. Quality standards for CGI have become extremely refined over the last generation, but that doesn't automatically mean every project needs a Hollywood budget to succeed. Sure, throwing around stacks of cash can get you some mind-blowing visuals, and let's be honest, money does talk pretty loudly in animation circles, but impressive visuals alone aren't the only marker of quality. Even when something isn't quite as breathtakingly polished as Arcane, for example, you can still clearly see the passion, creativity, and genuine effort put into it. Ruby is a notable example for tackling this media maturation problem. Constraints were turned into stylistic choices, and that gave the studio something to expand on. Later seasons, by comparison, have corrected many of the flaws early viewers of the series noted while never giving up what made it good to begin with. So you're probably thinking, cool story, but what the fuck does any of this mean for AI-generated content? Well, the harsh truth is that some people will always dismiss AI-generated work as bad. Some folks are rightfully going to be annoyed as hell that I'm even comparing AI creations to beloved human-produced media. And there will always be others who stubbornly insist that streaming isn't real entertainment, VR is permanently stuck in gimmick territory, and CGI never had and never will have any redeeming quality. And you know what? That is okay. AI slop is shit. There, I said the thing. Uh, but look, it doesn't bother me. One of the greatest skill sets of humans is taking literal garbage and turning it into something genuinely useful. Seriously, there have been entire civilizations built around turning low quality building blocks into gold and cat videos. Uh, when we look back at the sloppy phases of our favorite media, we realize how important these missteps were. They helped us shape our taste, sharpen our standards, and figure out what clicks for us and what absolutely does not. Sure, it stings a little bit when somebody points at the stuff that you or I make using AI and bluntly calls it slop, but let's be real here, they aren't exactly wrong. Criticism rarely feels nice, but on a broader scale, it is basically an invitation either lift the quality standard for AI-generated work or accept that it might get buried in a landfill of forgotten projects. Take AI-generated music as an example. After hearing hundreds of AI-produced songs, I can confidently say that most of it is questionable at best. But the minute humans step in to write lyrics or guide the creative process, suddenly it feels alive, relatable, and genuinely enjoyable. Big shout out to Lydia and Melody for helping me expand my views on this. Because I've experienced firsthand what AI can do with a human touch and a dash of quality control, anything that doesn't meet that bar rightfully earns the label of slop. 
You've spent decades quietly crafting your own quality standard. If AI-generated stuff doesn't meet your bar, it's completely fine to acknowledge that and move on. It's equally crucial to remember that someone else might have a completely different and weirdly specific criteria for quality, and that's okay too. Believe me, I'm not exempt from criticism here either. My very first solo project was a little text-based RPG with graphics about as sophisticated as a microwave potato. But without that awkward first step, I wouldn't have the foundational skills to create anything better today. If we held my tiny game up to some of the old school classics like Zork that inspired it, it might just barely squeak by a good enough quality check. I'm sure that plenty of you out there making your own brand of AI slop are learning important things, even if you're creating stuff that will make the future you face palm. Those lessons, those experiences, they stick with us. AI slop is exactly what it sounds like, and there's nothing wrong with calling it out for being precisely that. It's totally fair and frankly necessary to call out anyone trying to deceive others into believing something AI generated was purely crafted by human hands. But getting angry because someone else genuinely enjoys AI generated art is kind of like going to the local kids choir performance and then getting salty because you didn't hear world class opera. Not everyone is there for the same reason, and honestly some of us take a deep fascination and weird sense of pride watching these things develop and mature. I'm not sure if we're talking about offspring or AI anymore, which means that's it for me today, folks. Uh, join me next time where I will be teaching my cat how to grade papers using AI to pay off her vet bills. See you, nerds. <laughs>